Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes. Rockets. They are used to expand our knowledge about the universe that we live in through telescopes, manned missions, rovers, and send up satellites used to construct the infamous global positioning system. But they are expensive, really expensive. In fact, at the time of launch and adjusted for inflation, the Saturn V that took humans to the moon was worth over 100 lifetimes of income for a buyer saving up for it assuming they were in the middle class. Part of the reason that they are so expensive lies in the fact that they discard the main stages of the rocket. Why would they do this? What benefits does it provide? How could organizations such as SpaceX aim to fix this problem? And how, when, and why were rockets designed in the first place? Greetings, interesting informer here. Let's start with the history behind these powerful machines. The fuel of the earliest rockets was gunpowder. It was invented by the Chinese during the Tang Dynasty and was originally designed by alchemists for the sole purpose of finding an elixir that could grant immortality. Spoiler alert, they never did. But that's not to say that their search was a complete failure. What they did find was to revolutionize warfare and eventually spark the beginning of space exploration a few centuries later. The earliest rockets were most likely used by the Chinese as a sort of pseudo-missile explosive that they would attach to arrows. These sort of solid fuel rockets would continue to be exclusively used for the next few centuries. But what benefit does gunpowder hold over the other fuels? Turns out, pretty much only one. The only reason we use gunpowder in guns and model rockets instead of something like wood or oil is due to the fact that gunpowder carries its own oxidizer. Essentially, that means that it has a far faster combustion rate than that of the aforementioned alternative fuels. I say that five times fast. In fact, this may seem quite counterintuitive. However, the things you, yes, you eat on a daily basis have on average twice the specific energy of gunpowder. But the energy released in a given interval of time is what is vastly different. This is because something like fat, for example, requires to be heated to the point where enough fat is evaporating and mixing with the oxygen in the air to begin a self-sustaining burn. Whereas gunpowder already carries its own source of nitrogen in the form of potassium nitrate. Eventually though, a rocket that runs on liquid fuel was designed, built, and launched by Dr. H. Goddard. That day was March 16th, 1926 at Auburn, Massachusetts. He used cryogenic liquid oxygen and gasoline as a propellant. It was able to achieve a maximum height of 41 feet. The flight lasted only 2.5 seconds. Since that day, he has launched 35 successful liquid fueled rockets. The pros of using bipropellant liquid fuels include making the thrust of the rocket throttleable and can even be shut off completely. The cons are that they are far more complex than solid fuel rockets and often far more expensive. The pros of using solid fuel rocket engines are that they are actually pretty simple and cheap. The cons are that they cannot be throttled or shut down once ignited, and that pretty much makes them a bomb if the fuel is not stored properly. Due to certain limitations of the environment of space, no atmospheric oxygen because there's no atmosphere, and the colossal amount of kinetic energy required for attaining even a low Earth orbit, rockets need to be able to, at least in the beginning of the launch, supply more thrust than its initial weight. This is one of the many design challenges that come with designing a rocket. Too much fuel and the rocket will just be too heavy to take off or take off too slowly in order to achieve the necessary height and speed to begin circularization of the orbit. I will go over orbital mechanics and its equations in another video. Too little fuel and it won't have the chemical energy required for achieving an orbit. And on top of all that, the rocket needs to carry a massive amount of oxidizer to enable the fuel to even burn in the first place. Comparing the engine efficiency of rockets with jet engine alternatives, you can really begin to see why we reserve the use of rocket engines only where absolutely necessary. This whole low efficiency, high power situation rockets have going on means only a very small fraction of the total mass of the rocket can actually be the payload. You know, the actual reason they're sending the rocket up in the first place. Take a look at this clip from a TEDx talk appropriately titled, The Tyranny of the Rocket Equation for a more thorough explanation. 
Now, let's look at the implications to design. I mean, engineers have to design these things. And I, I've taken a couple classes of vehicles we're all used to. Let's look at surface vehicles. Okay, and I've taken the Queen Mary, my pickup truck, and a locomotive. And these things are all less than 10% propellant. They could have high payload capability. 60% of the mass of these aids could be payload. And they're made out of billets of steel. And, and they're, they're robust. Now, let's look at aviation, airplanes. 30 to 40% propellant, up to 40% payload capability. These are truly lightweight structures made out of aluminum, made out of epoxy graphite composite, sometimes titanium. You got to roll your engineering nickels around when you get to airplanes and you just can't wantonly drill a hole through some part of the structure because you want to bolt on a new bracket or something like that. You got to do your engineering when you get into something that's 30 to 40 percent propellant. Now look at rockets. They're, they're not even in that category. 85% propellant, 2% payload. Rockets are on the edge of our engineering ability to even make and also pay for. And I put a, another category of, of uh, uh, devices that are called explosive devices. And there's a Molotov cocktail. And so rockets are closer to explosive devices than they are any other kind of vehicle that we're used to traveling in. Which finally brings me to the answer as to why they discard the rocket's main lower stages. The single most energy demanding aspect of the whole mission is escaping Earth because not only must the spacecraft directly fight the force of gravity, but it must also accelerate rapidly vertically to escape the majority of the atmospheric influence as well as horizontally to circularize the orbit. This means that despite the huge waste of money every time a non-reusable spacecraft is launched, the main lower stages do not have to waste any fuel on a return trip and landing, but can instead provide just a little more acceleration to the rest of the spacecraft. This technique makes sense if you only plan to use a spacecraft once. However, there are obvious drawbacks to doing this. For one, you lose the value of the stage. This is seriously bad news, especially when you consider most of the value of the rocket is usually in the more powerful lower stages of the rocket. And also you need to ensure the stage does not fall onto a populated area or any air traffic or ship routes currently in use. Now you may be thinking, why not just compromise and just bring back the lower stage with a parachute? First of all, it wouldn't be worth the wait. <laughs> the sheer amount of parachute needed to slow down to a safe landing speed would end up adding significant mass to the rocket. Even if the parachute managed to slow down the massive booster going hypersonic speeds to a relatively safe speed of about 4 meters per second, 10 miles an hour, it would need to land in a body of water or some other material to absorb some of the shock and impact landing water will still hurt the reusability. Otherwise, the whole point of bringing it back, reusability, will just be thrown out the window because of the damage done to the booster. The current most fuel efficient way of bringing back a booster stage is by separating before all the fuel is depleted, only about 5-10% to or so of the total fuel in the booster stage, and performing a few boost back burns to return to the launch site.
I had a lot of fun researching and producing the video. It took a little while because it was my first one, so hopefully you enjoyed it too. If you guys have any questions or suggestions for a future video or criticisms, feel free to post it down in the comment section below. And keep learning, guys.